Hello there and welcome to the Hash Power Academy. My name is Jake Scanlon. I'm the lead educator here at the Academy and this is a place for you to learn anything and everything to do with Bitcoin and its underlying network of technologies and commodities. Now, the topic of today's video is more focusing on Bitcoin's uh, energy exchange rate between electricity, kilowatt hours and BTC. And these two have a very fundamental relationship in the Bitcoin network. At any moment of time when the Bitcoin price was nothing and Satoshi Nakamoto, what did he do? He consumed electricity through his CPU on his laptop or computer. We don't know exactly what he had. Um, he consumed electricity and exchanged it into the first uh, million Bitcoin or so. There wasn't an, a dollar exchange rate. So Bitcoin to kilowatt is actually the original exchange rate for Bitcoin. And I call it exchange rate because it's not a one way process. It's not just consume energy to produce Bitcoin, but actually it's being introduced as a uh, demand response uh, relationship on the grid. Miners are switching off when the power, kilowatt hours, priced in dollars for now, um, is more valuable to the local grid than what the global network is willing to pay you for the consumption of the power. So miners have a direct choice to consume energy, export it to the internet globally, or sell it locally. But we'll delve into that into other videos. So to, to calculate the amount of Bitcoin you can earn per kilowatt, has two fundamental things. Your efficiency of machine, your joules or watts per terahash. The lower the, the, the watts per terahash figure, the more efficient the machine and the higher the amount of Bitcoin per kilowatt. The less efficient the machine, the more energy it consumes, say 30 watts per terahash, uh, the lower the amount of Bitcoin you can earn per kilowatt because the machine is consuming more energy to produce the same amount of compute which earns a certain amount of Bitcoin. These are all mathematically connected pieces. So I'm just going to write out the formula because it'll be much easier to understand. So a kilowatt, thousand watts. If we're going to move through the layers, we need to understand a thousand watts divided by efficiency. So if this computer is consuming 21.75 watts to produce a, a terahash, we're going to divide 1000 by 21.75. So that is allowing us to understand that we're making about 46 terahash per kilowatt. Um, and 46 terahash produces and earns a certain amount of Bitcoin. And this is where hash price comes in. Now hash price is essentially how much Bitcoin you can earn per terahash of compute per day. So we have a time variable, a compute variable, and a quantity of Bitcoin earned. And we need to divide all of this down. So let's do, let's just draw it up here. 455, well, just divide them. 455 divided by 843 million terahash, multiplied by the price. So we've got this, this direct conversion gets you the quantity of Bitcoin. If you do 455 divided by 843, you get the amount of Bitcoin per exahash but one exahash is one million terahash. So if we did 455 divided by 843 million and write that out, you get the amount of the quantity of Bitcoin per terahash per day, because this is 144 blocks. And if we multiply it by price, I believe we get a figure of 0.045. So we're getting our 45 or 46 terahash by dividing 1000 watts by 21.75. So that's about 46 terahash. Now if we multiply by the 0.045, so we're earning 4.5 cent of Bitcoin per terahash per day. Now if you just did this calculation, you're going to get about $2 worth of Bitcoin per day, but we want it in uh, uh, per hour. So 20 divided by 24. And this gets us to, oh, let's draw it below it. This gets us to a figure of 0 0.0, 0 0.0862. So there you are. Now, this is very long winded, but it's requiring you to sort of break down the relationship between, between all these pieces. Again, this dollar component to the kilowatt doesn't have to be there. In the future of Bitcoin, it will just be kilowatt hours exchanged to a quantity of Bitcoin and you remove the dollar valuation of the Bitcoin and you remove the dollar valuation of the electricity. The, it's a formality at that point. 
but basically yeah you're earning 8.62 cent of bitcoin per kilowatt hour now what if your electricity is five cent so for every five cent of electricity input cost you're getting 8.6 cent of output revenue now what we can do is multiply your input cost which is the production floor in this example and this is your revenue rate you multiply these two figures up to the point of one bitcoin and that gives you because this is a ratio for every five cent you're earning 8.6 cent so if we divide them which gets a, gives us a ratio and then multiply it up to the bitcoin price we get a production cost of about uh, 80 no 48,000 am i still on the screen here no 48,000 48,000 roughly so the network average production cost right now with five cent electricity with a 21.75 uh, watts per terahash computer with the current network hash rate and network revenue is about $48,000 per Bitcoin. Now, the other thing to know is that not every miner is using five cent energy. The price on the grid is not always five cent. So if the price on the grid is six, seven, eight cents, the miner would be able to switch a machine off at different rates and the different efficiency of machine. Right now, if you're using a 30 joule per terahash machine, it's using more energy, and we can, we can change this figure for 30. So you do 1,000 divided by 30, which means you're earning less hash rate per five cent of electrical cost, kilowatt hour. Same network revenue, the same 24 hour day, the production cost to, to in fact, let's write these in, 21.75, 21.75 equals 48,000. If you're a 30 joule per terahash machine, that's about $66,000 per Bitcoin. And if you're the latest efficient machine, still using that five cent, let's say the 12 joule per terahash, it's coming up at about 26,000. So there you go, the latest generation machines of 12 joules per terahash, which means you divide the thousand by 12, which is an even larger quantity of hash rate, terahash per kilowatt, multiplied by the amount of Bitcoin per terahash that you're earning per day, divide it by 24, bring it down to an hour. The production cost is $26,000 per Bitcoin. But remember that a 30 watts per terahash machine is very, very cheap, less efficient, higher production cost. The average is still a good average, 48,000. So you're, you're earning a Bitcoin under $50,000, but you have the cost of the machine to contend with. And the latest generation machines of 12 joules of energy cost to produce that output one terahash, which earns a quantity of Bitcoin. And the interesting thing of this, it's all mathematically connected. We can remove the dollar entirely with this. This is, this is the interesting piece of the future. And this, Calculating this gives you that information that if your electricity at home uh, is 10 cent a kilowatt hour, uh, you wouldn't want to mine with an average efficient machine because you'll make a loss. Right now, with a 12 joule per terahash machine, this will rise up to, I want to say, 15 cent. There we go. You can write in the comments section if you do 1,000 divided by 12 multiplied by 0.045 divided by 24, what is the amount of Bitcoin per kilowatt hour? And if it's more than 15, there you go. If it's less than 15, um, and that is about the standard US energy rate, I believe about 15 cent a kilowatt. And obviously if you want to be producing one, well, one dollar of electricity earns you two dollars of Bitcoin, you would want an electricity rate in this example of 4.3 cent per kilowatt, which is very cheap. I think I'll leave it there. This is something that I'm definitely going to do. I'm going to do another video at some point um, on an Excel spreadsheet or something and, and attach the, the link uh, or a Google sheet, shall I say, and attach the link into the, uh, the, the comment section and allow you to just play and understand with the numbers and, and having a, a column with all of these facts and figures. And as you change them, you see what changes in terms of production costs. And the most interesting thing here between the production cost and the market price 
is you can create a percentage between them. And that percentage is a very good metric to understanding the good time to buy or not. As I said earlier in the video, when you're able to buy Bitcoin at these sorts of prices, it's an absolute steal. Not so much stealing, it's you are able to buy Bitcoin at the same rate that miners are producing. And what Bitcoin does over time is the older, more inefficient machines with higher production costs they get kicked off the network. The network pays people who are efficient. As you introduce more efficient chips, you earn Bitcoin at that lower rate. That is fair. If someone is to acquire the money at a lower cost, it's because they were highly efficient and had lots of energy availability because in the future, the aspect of Bitcoin to kilowatt hour being an exchange rate is they can buy the energy to produce Bitcoin at this rate in dollars for now, but also, if the price of energy goes up, if the price of energy went to nine cent, why would you consume the power? Sell it to them at nine cent instead of earning from the network at eight point six cent. So Bitcoin miners are going to be an exchange rate where the rate of revenue defined by the global network is um, a benchmark, a price in which external uh, transactions can settle and bring that value into the network. Because you're if you're selling energy at nine cent to buy 8.6 cent a Bitcoin, there is a capital inflow into the network by providing a deliverable commodity of electricity to the real world. <sighs> right, thank you for listening. I hope you enjoy. Uh, I want to know if uh, you've done this calculation, do a thousand watts divided by 12, multiply by 0.045 divided by 24, and you get your Bitcoin per kilowatt hour with the latest efficient machine. And if you divide five cents by that rate, you'll get approximately, I believe, $26,000 when you multiply it by the uh, Bitcoin price. And again, I'm going to have some uh, charts and metrics and a Google sheet at some point for you to learn even more. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoy and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.